Welcome men to the Pursuit of Manliness podcast, where we are vigorously equipping men to pursue biblical manliness. My name is Jared Samuels. I am the host of this podcast. Men, as always, thank you for listening to today's episode. Now, when you get the opportunity, make sure to visit the Pursuit of manliness.com there you will find this podcast episode the entire catalog of previous episodes you can see our suggested reading page sign up for the email newsletter and as always take a look at what is featured in our pursuit of manliness gear store one last thing if you would consider joining the herd the herd is made up of a community of men who help support the pursuit of manliness and are building a global community for just $5 a month. You can join this community and gain access to exclusive pursuit of manliness podcast content and more men. It's time for today's podcast episode. Let's pray. God, thanks for these men. Thank you for the the ability for us to connect. I pray for those that will be listening to this, whether they're in their trucks going down the road, maybe they're working out or maybe they're in the break room, wherever they're at, God, this, the conversation we're going to have, whether these men come to the retreat or not, I pray that they would just sense the camaraderie and the community that we have here, that the conversation that will uh, take place uh, would be encouraging. And maybe there'll be some things shared that uh, guys at their church may consider for their own men's ministry or to uh, start one, w- whatever that is. We know that you'll get the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, men, at this time, I'm welcoming some of the guys in tribe, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, this is a motley crew. That's what this is what we do. Um, if you're not watching, you just listen and go along with it. We have several guys that will be jumping in and out of here from from tribe who were at last year's retreat, who are coming to this year's retreat. And uh, we're just going to open it up, kind of a free for all. Let them jump in whenever they want to jump in and uh, we'll cut them off at some point. But uh, guys, first of all, thanks for being here. I want to start with um, the, the obvious question for those that might be listening. Uh, Why did you sign? Why did you register to come to the retreat? None of you guys that I can see so far live in Indianapolis. So you had to get in the car, make some plans. Why did you come to the retreat last year? Uh, So I live in Pennsylvania. It's about seven hours from Indianapolis. So it was a decision for me to make for my wife because there are sacrifices with that. But for me, it was being in tribe. It let me take it to the next step to actually get to meet some of these brothers face to face. I'd already had a small meetup with, uh, two guys from tribe, but this was kind of putting a lot more of the faces together and getting just to sit around together and talk. And um, I know it's been said before, but it's amazing when you get together uh, with a bunch of guys, especially those of you in tribe who have never been to the retreat or have met up, it's instant connections. There's no awkward pauses. There's no tell me about yourself. Tell me your life story because we, we know each other. And um, if nothing else, we know that we are together united with a message of Jesus Christ. And it, it was a great time. Um, I'm looking forward to it this year. Already have my Airbnb and uh, I'm bringing my son this year. So he's 11 and uh, I, I'm interested and excited to see how he does uh, with all the other little guys and to see if he wants to hang out with me more or goes with the other guys. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, this when you Josh, you talked about you know Jesus being at the center of it all, and I think that's the key. Uh, this will be my third one, and you know I can. So I come from South Carolina, so I'm going about twelve hours up to Indianapolis. Um, I can remember the first one. Um, at that point, you know, I knew Jarrett from you know back home, but I really didn't know anybody else. I hadn't met up. I've been in tribe for a minute, and. Um, actually, I just lost my best friend about three or four weeks before. And so I, I, I've told a story before. I came up to that first retreat with my spirit on zero. I, and I walk in Castleton Christian Church, and I see four or five of the guys that you see in these little boxes every week, whether it be on a video or be on a Zoom call. And it was like you know them your whole life. Um, and so that – that camaraderie is easy. Jesus is at the center of it. You have that bond in Christ. Like, and, and you know, we, we talk through enough things on a Zoom call and, and challenge videos and things. Man, getting together is just, it's just easy. Like you said, so um, it's a powerful experience. Uh, 
I'll jump in next. Uh, I'm I was driving from the Gulf Coast. I'm down in Galveston, so it was about 15 hours from me. This is a competition, so we got to just keep building it up, apparently. Um, and that that alone took a little bit of convincing for myself. I actually could have went to a retreat before I went to my very first one, and I waited. And then, as like Rob said, you get to know these guys in the boxes a little bit more. And I'm like, I need to meet these guys face to face and. I need to take the next step um, of really putting myself around guys that I know are going to make me better uh, and and have a little more accountability in, in seeing them face to face. And so made that happen. Uh, a couple of things occurred for me while I was there. One, uh, the, the campfire stuff and the worship sessions. And the, I mean, it was all good. There's nothing to take away. But those were the ones that like like Rob said, he was kind of spirit on zero. Even if your spirit wasn't on zero, you're going to leave real full. Um, like definitely that, that hope meter, as far as like having more hope in the world and, and hope in the fact that you're not alone out there trying to do the right thing from day to day. Like there are other guys that are going through the same stuff. And, and now more of a, like an army of men that you can reach out to that, you know, are going to give you solid, uh, advice, solid stuff, and they're not going to let you BS your way through it. So it's easy to avoid that on some online ministries, but I think this isn't one of them when you put yourself out there in that regard. And, and so that definitely did it for me. It's expanded from there. So once I put myself out there and, and got meeting the guys in the boxes, uh, I, I've met multiple of these guys on screen uh, in person and not necessarily just at the retreat. Like in other places as well. And, and I, I love that and will continue to do that. Justin, I was going to say with what you said, I agree about the accountable, uh, the idea of being accountable to each other. You know, it's easy online to save face and say, oh, I'm, you know, I'm doing my reading, I'm doing my things. But when you meet face to face and you create that relationship, I think it it, it strengthens that bond to like when you see a brother struggling or dealing with something, it, whether they're calling them out or lifting them up, um, it, it definitely changes that relationship. And, you know, for people who aren't in tribe, it's a w great way just to see what the brotherhood of tribes like, because I know the retreat is so much more than just tribe. I mean, a lot of people from tribe are there, but um, it, it creates those relationships and those bonds and it goes beyond the retreat. That's for sure. Yes, I would agree totally with that. I had joined Tribe, wasn't sure what I was getting into on this online uh, thing, but uh, I went to the retreat not knowing what I was getting into, not knowing anyone, a little apprehensive about going, but uh, I was welcomed and uh, everybody was more than friendly and uh, I got to meet some great guys and uh, build on that relationship. And uh, it's just amazing uh, how you you see these people in these little boxes uh, on Zoom calls and stuff and on challenge videos. But, uh, you know, you get to know them pretty well. It really is amazing. You know, I really connected with Roger. And, um, uh, you know, my experience was I connected with just almost everybody on this screen um, and intend on, you know, deepening that as I go. Um, I didn't make the, the quite the mileage sacrifice that a lot of you did, but was still apprehensive uh, coming in. It was my first season in tribe. And, uh, you know, it, it, all that apprehension or anxiety or whatever, that was all alleviated, you know, within an hour of being there. Um, and it, it, you know, it was, it was one of the most authentic, um, gatherings of men that I have ever experienced, just men, um, you know, and I love my church brothers at home, but there, there's something, I don't know, there's a connection that happens within this group that's different and, uh, was really blessed by that. The worship sessions, um, you know, we had some serious prayer time. We prayed over young guys. You know, that that those moments right there were, were just golden. And I left uh, in a lot higher place than than where I showed up. Um, and I'm really looking forward to this year. There was one instance 
uh, I think it was the first retreat that, I mean, there's many, but there's one in particular from the worship services that was just stands out. Um, a few of us got baptized that night. Uh, it was myself, TJ Clayton, and Chad Corwin. And we were in the back of the church, you know, getting dressed, and the rest of the worship service was going on. The men were singing, and the sound and the power that was coming from that church that night. And I love y'all, but some of y'all can't sing. I mean, let's be real. But the sound that was, I mean, it was amazing. And, you know, I couldn't imagine what it would be like to be out there, but to be behind the church and to hear it was just, it was awesome. I mean, only God can do that. I mean, that the power of that worship service was so obvious and, and uh, I just can't imagine being there and not, like like you said, Justin, I mean, my spirit may have been there going into that day, but it it left there. And it was just because of we're worshiping great God and, and just linking arms with men and, and knowing that front row. You know, I, I remember that front row clearly, like I go to war with any of those guys. I mean, they that was just the type of type of guy that was there. Yeah. Wholeheartedly agree. And I'll, I say that going to the retreat. I'm coming from Nebraska is about uh, 10 hours. Uh, so it was, it was a pretty good drive. And honestly, I was apprehensive. You know, I'm one of those guys that traditionally in the past, especially before I joined, joined tribe and, and kind of into my first session, I'm not one to kind of step out of my, my comfortable box. So driving halfway across the country, uh, to come to a retreat and I'd never been to a retreat before either. I didn't know what to expect. Uh, it was really this podcast episode that kind of won me over. Um, and you know, even up to the retreat, we had things going on in the family that I wasn't sure I was kind of, well, I'm going, no, I'm not going. And I agree with all the guys that say, like I, I pulled in there, uh, you know, with my tank on empty. Like I, I was pretty spiritually low. Um, I, I remember recording one of my challenge videos sitting there in the in the back of my van uh, in the parking lot at the church. It must have been the day I got there. And I, I mean, I poured my heart out in that video. I was low. And by the time I left, I was recharged. I was ready to go. I was ready to go back home and share that with my wife and my daughter. Um, and to, to the point that it was no question, you know, not even a month afterwards, my wife was like, you're going next year, right? Like, don't worry about the money, just plan it. You're going. (laughs) So, and that's a a testament all the way around. My wife's the same way. It always falls on our anniversary. And I don't think she'd go on an anniversary date with me. If I, if I turned down the retreat to go out with her, she, you know, she basically kicked me out of the house. I mean, but, but in all seriousness, I mean, she sees the, the results of not only tribe, but just spending that time, spending that fellowship that I come by a better equipped husband. Um, so it, we can celebrate an anniversary at a later date, um, but that weekend is just so powerful and so important that I, I couldn't imagine not doing it. I think I came to it a little bit different way than you guys did. I, I wasn't in tribe yet. I had, uh, only been introduced to Pursuit of Manliness in January of that year um, by Brian, who's on the call. He, we go to church together, and he finally said, you know, they got this retreat. I'm going to go check it out. I thought, you know, I've liked what I've been hearing. I'll go check it out. I've been to men's retreats before. Usually pretty decent, you know, good food. Uh, fellowship is okay. Uh, when I get there <laughs> – the one guy that I know has to turn around and drive back home because he forgot something. And so I'm left a, a group of 150 guys that I don't know. And um, I never felt awkward. Uh, Jarrett kind of mentioned it on a podcast the other day that at lunch I was sitting by myself just because I didn't know anybody, but I wasn't trying to draw attention to myself, just enjoying my chicken sandwich. And he came over and talked to me, Phil Souders and his son Luke came over and talked to me. Uh, and that, that there let me know that what I had been hearing on the podcast, the genuine, that the guy I met on the podcast met, you know, 
per se, was the guy that I got sitting across the table from me. And then we get back to the church and uh, Gage Ritchie walks up and says, hey, I need to introduce myself. And then I met another guy who I think is coming back this year. I don't think he's in tribe, but from St. Louis, who's a Mormon. But we sat there for four hours on uh, between the time we got back from lunch and the time we got ready for the evening thing, just having a conversation like we had known each other for years. And so for the guys who are thinking, well, this is just a bunch of guys that already know each other. I didn't know a soul. I knew one person but I walked away from there with more friendships. And since then I've connected more had face to face with a few of you connected through messaging. Uh, but it's, it was such a good experience that a week after I got home, I was still talking about it. My wife grabbed my phone one day and signed me up for tribe just because I kind of tossed around that idea, but she's like, you enjoyed that so much. And I can see what that one weekend did. I, I want to see what six months does for you. So yeah, I think that's the misconception is so like from the outside, people say, well, these guys all know each other. And that's not the case. Um and I mean I've I've used this told this example before too, but I mean the after the whole worship services were over, we like we had forty it was tribe guys, mostly 40 guys go to a, a restaurant. And I sat at a table with, uh, you know, Patrick, Clinton, TJ, but it could have been any of the 40. It wouldn't have made a difference. And like, it was like talking to old buddies. Like it was like, like a class reunion. Um, you know, I think, I think one guy said it was, it's like a family reunion that you want to go to. And I, I think that, that I mean, it, but it's not built on years. It's built on just genuine Jesus at the center of it. But I, so whether you know somebody or not, um, you'll find some connection, especially if you just put yourself out there just a little bit. Anything um, from last year stand out to you? Uh, you, you? The guys that are on this call are from Tribe because I know them and they know each other, but they're right. There's probably 60 to 70 percent of the people there don't know any. I shouldn't say don't know anyone. They know very few people. So walking in for you guys, though, you, you kind of had an idea what go, what was it like going in there. Anything from 22 that you're at that stands out that you'd say, I, I, I'll remember that for quite a while? Well, one, one thing that I, I want to say real quick, you know, um, you, we it's hard to talk about a fall retreat without also talking about tribe, um, you know, because you, you go from like this, this, this pursuit of manliness, you know, close the group on Facebook and then you get into tribe and then you kind of got to go to the fall retreat, too. And it's just like this, this progression thing. Um, that, I mean, you get in tribe and you meet these guys, like we're looking at each other right now. And there's an opportunity that it comes to meet 95% of these dudes. You've got to go, you know, and it's definitely what worth it. The thing that stands out to me most about the last retreat were the number of guys that I met that I didn't know before. And now they're in tribe that, that, that really hits me hard because it, it just shows that whatever is happening at that retreat, they don't want to lose that. And so they're like, okay, I'm going to join this tribe and try to keep this going. And you can all attest to the fact that you do. It, it does keep it going, you know, um, because you build these relationships with these guys and you're like, well, I want to talk to this guy again. And, you know, it's, I want to talk to all of them again. So you get in the tribe and here we all are. Um, but last year, what was, I, I think one of the most powerful things for me was there was so much more of a sense of community, even than the, the retreat before for me personally, I don't know if that, you know, if anybody else will attest to that or not, but there were so many guys that from the first retreat, they weren't in tribe before, then they joined tribe. So now come second retreat, I don't know, the, the army just keeps building, man. I, that's, that's what I got to say about it. Got to pop in real quick and say, the I I definitely felt awkward when I was first going. And so I, I think a lot of us have talked about that. And that's a given. So if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, it's so uncomfortable, I'm gonna be awkward. We all we all were at some point. And we and the guys that have been there, they know that you're gonna be feeling like like that's an initial thing. Like we all know it and and we're gonna embrace you just the same. But one of the cool things that stood out to me 
was that it all the like divider walls are gone. So even when you go to your local church, um, a lot of times you're going out of obligation, like hopefully not eventually, but a lot of times you are um, when you're first building up. When, when the guys that come to the, like you're choosing to go to this, like there's no, you're not obligated, like you're choosing to go to this. So that's all of us are choosing to come come together to this. And there's lots of different reasons for why I may do that. But then when we get there, you and everybody else there for one reason or another is pursuing after the Lord. And so it takes down so many barriers. There's no socioeconomic barriers or there's just all those things that like can sometimes make awkward conversation. Like we're there all pursuing like the same thing. And, and so it, that is a huge reason for why it made all the, I talked to so many guys while I was there that I've never met in my entire life, including this is where we're talking about the tribe thing, guys that were not in tribe. So guys I'd never seen before, even on the little boxes and stuff like that. They're part of the pursuit of Madison, countless conversations. And we're all as a generalization, we're there for the same reason. Uh, we want this, like we want the, camaraderie we want to be around other men who are pursuing the lord that we know that this is right and so it just made for instant instant bonds um instant friendships made took away so much of that awkward uncomfortableness that you could just get right into it and have some some beyond the surface level conversations uh and it wasn't honestly that hard to do i remember sitting at a table with roger loved every second of it um, I, I talked to guys that had been following the Lord for 40 years. And I talked to guys who had like been saved like the month before and they, and they, and it was wonderful. And I gained the same thing from all the groups. Like I, I love talking to, I'm somewhere in between. I love talking to new believers. A lot of times they ask questions that I'm already thinking, but I'm too embarrassed to ask. Um, and I just, I, I love it. Two things jump out from last year to me, and one of them wasn't even, I guess it was preparation for it. Um, a bunch of us, I don't remember how many, I don't remember what, if it was a tribe session that led to it, but we prayed over every seat in the in the sanctuary. And uh, you know, I have no idea what y'all prayed about, but I, I went to every seat and I prayed that somebody would give their life to Jesus that night. And we we had one person decide to get baptized that night. I'm not saying not saying because of my prayer there, but just there was something, you know, Doug, you spoke of the army. There's just something about looking across that room and seeing a bunch of guys kneel in front of a chair, you know, praying for whoever was going to sit in that chair. We didn't know who was going to sit where. And that person might be from Indianapolis, they might be from California, they might be from England. Who knows? We're praying that that God would move in their life. And I think that was that was a powerful thing that was even before the retreat started. And then just praying over the young people. We had a lot of young people at the retreat last year and just taking a moment to put hands on them and just pray, you know, for them, uh, I thought was uh, just important and powerful. Yeah, I, I was going to reiterate what you just said about the praying over the youth, um, the young people. And that's what kind of pushed me to, I, I wanted to bring my son, not just for that, but for him to see, I, I think for this next generation of younger men to see what godly men look like and, you know, just continue, as Doug said, build this army up of prayer warriors, of people that are on fire for the Lord. And, you know, you think of how that can change uh, families, communities, churches, workplaces, just with, with the heart after Jesus. And for me, that was very impactful. And I really, I mean, I, I enjoyed it all, but I enjoyed also just the, the downtime between the worship time, between the, you know, the meal time where we just stood around, sat around and just talked and you meet so many people, whether they're in tribe or not. And like Justin said, you know, we all had apprehension, I think going to your first retreat and things. I mean, we're not, we are not a bunch of extroverts, believe it or not. Uh, many of us uh, are the opposite. And, uh, you know, getting there, a part of it is just that apprehension of what's it going to be like. But once you're there, it's just, it's having that com camaraderie uh, at Jared's house. I know we're probably not going there this year because we're too big now, but it, it was just a, it was a wonderful time just to sit around a campfire and talk um, and, and just fellowship with one another. 
think that was for me as well. I mean, I enjoyed the worship services. I enjoyed the messages. Of course, I enjoyed the food. But the the way it was structured to have that time to to build the community was that was probably what I talked about more than anything is that even though there were, you know, a couple hours where we, there was nothing planned, I never felt bored. I never felt like, all right, is it time to get this thing on? It was more the, oh, it's already time to go to the service. I, man, I was enjoying this conversation. So that's what I'm looking forward to again is, is now that I've been in tribe for a couple of sessions and know some people is to be able to, you know, put hand to hand that for the ones I haven't had a chance to meet yet. You know, since being in tribe, I have gone around to just to have that community. I've met up with some guys whenever I were my wife and I've been traveling. And I'm looking forward to that more to have that community to build it even further and to welcome in the new guys that show up. Yeah, I've I've got to add on to what Gene just said too, because the the first retreat you know, Jarrett was very intentional about that, making sure that it wasn't just filled with all this programming and stuff, that there would actually be fellowship time. And because let's be honest, we, we can go to a worship service every week at home, you know, and, and stuff like that. Um, I mean, it's different. And you guys, you guys know what I mean. But uh, it's that fellowship time, you know, that community time that, that really, really grows what's what's happening here and so yeah and then you separate that with some awesome worship time and then some really good biblical teaching and stuff and yeah you get a recipe for success but yeah the community that's that's what it's all about one question i do have because somebody's going to ask it and they're going to ask it often where did you guys stay what's your accommodation when you come to town you don't got to tell me the the brand if you whatever but where, where do you stay someone said airbnb what else we got i parked my camper in the parking lot um and I, I don't know if you're going to do this again, Jarrett, but having those those clean bathrooms that you had in the parking lot and those showers, that was class, man. That was totally class. Um, so, yeah, I, I camp. I camp in the parking lot in my camper. Let, let me say that. Yes, the bathrooms and showers will will be there. I'm no camper. I stayed at the brewery. Oh, the way you're dressed. I'm surprised it wasn't like the Embassy Suites or something, Raj. But the jury does take guys like me because I was there too. So, you know, they take all kinds. He's getting you, Ryder. Uh, I did an Airbnb with other guys. So we like coordinated and only one other person. This year we're doing Airbnb again, but we're probably going to have like four different states in that Airbnb. Um, and... I don't think any of them are people that like I know really close. I know them through this ministry. And so we just tried to coordinate to make it happen. But I will say, I love the fact that you let people set up tents and stuff. Like it, there's no barrier to stop you from an economic standpoint from being able to come. Like it's dirt cheap to come to the retreat and there's property where you can set up your tent. There's a bathroom and shower provided. Like you can do it on a dime for sure, which is awesome. I pitched the tent, but this year I'm going to stay in a hotel or an Airbnb just because I plan on being there for more than one night and I have to have a sleep mask and my battery doesn't last all night. So I got to be able to breathe. I stayed, I camped in my tent last year. The first year slept in the car. This year, I'm probably just bringing a tent again. I'm going to be roughing it by the campfire with everybody else. I ain't paying for a motel room. I'm just going to sleep on the stars. Um, I will say this, though, as far as things I took from the retreat, in 2022, it was, like everybody said, the praying for the kids, that was a highlight to me. And everybody worshiping and singing together, like a room full of men praising God is awesome to me. And just a community. The first year I wasn't a tribe yet. I, I joined tribe after the retreat, but I only knew four people before I came up there the first year. And that was only through online. You, Doug, and a couple of others. I, I, I talked to four people online. I didn't know nobody that was up there. Last year I knew a lot more. But even the ones I didn't, it's like when you first meet, it's like you know everybody you, your whole life. 
I walk up to somebody I've never met in person, and it's like I've always known you. We can sit down and talk like we've been friends for life. And I think that's just the Lord right there. The community is what's so important. And bringing people together from all around that don't know each other, but it seems like you always have, that's what it's about to me. That's my best take from it all. I will say too, until somebody interrupts me, uh, I was thinking we had a guy one year sleep by the fire. So he had a sleeping bag and that was it. We had one guy in a deer blind in an inflatable mattress and the inflatable mattress deflated pretty quickly. And he didn't know that uh, we had, we have people sleeping in their vehicles. We have semi truck driver. We had a semi truck driver there. Um, <laughs> hammocks. I don't even think our trees can hold a hammock, but boy, these kids find a way to lasso one up there so it doesn't matter what you do there's going to be somebody else probably doing it so I, I'm, I'm with you man go if your body can handle it go cheap if they can't get a jury in where they give you free breakfast or whatever i mean get something out of it get some air conditioning or whatever but um typically the weather's been pretty good we did do a hike together so that was that was a good thing we actually did a couple of hikes and things uh any, any funny stories i'll start i'm gonna while well, i'm jumping in here and i'll get out of the way uh garrison waiting for the shower in his robe that that is that's fantastic. And that that's legendary. Uh, Clint being homeless one year for circ different circumstances, sleeping everywhere, um, <laughs> everywhere in the Indianapolis metro area. Anybody else got a funny story or anything that stands out to you? You took, you took two of mine there. Um, but yeah, just, just, I mean, Clint Hayter being there, man, you're always going to get something out of that guy. That's just going to be funny. Um, but yeah, Garrison standing in the robe, that, that would probably have to be at the top of mind because it looked like, uh, unlike he should have had like a scrubby brush and a rubber ducky or something is kind of what, what was in my mind when he's just standing out there. Um, it kind of freaked me out. I didn't know like where some people were sleeping because it gets kind of dark out there. And so you go walk in and yeah, like you were saying, that guy that was sleeping by the fire I kind of, Hey, you okay, dude? He's like, yeah, I'm fine. And yeah, I thought that that was pretty funny. He just opened air right there. I'm going to curl up next to this fire and go to sleep. And he sure did. I'd only been there for a short amount of time and Doug set up some ax throwing targets. And, uh, so different kids and people were throwing axes and I was standing next to Garrison and he's, this is only been going on for five minutes. He's on his phone. I'm like, Garrison, what are you doing? He's like, I'm buying all this stuff. Like, so you might get a new hobby. You never, you just never know. But he was, he was trying to, he was sending back ax throwing gear to Iowa from his phone, watching these kids throw axes at, at these targets. I mean, it was just, you know, it, like you said, the downtime of it, there's just so many cool stories that come out of it. They may not be funny necessarily, or you can try to be there, but there's just so many of those one on one interactions that happen that are just really memorable and cool. Maybe I'm the only one that found it funny, but the uh, heart attack that most of us got when that horn started blasting. <laughs> that is on my list. <laughs> the shofar, yeah. I thought, well, in those the, the musicians on the stage, we, we thought that this, something was malfunctioning. And so it was actually it was actually kind of a bad thing at, at the time because um yeah, we we thought that there was like a sound issue. And so I'm looking at Jason Ford and he kind of stops playing like, no, it wasn't him. I stopped playing like, no, it's not me. Cause it was still going. And then finally it just stopped. And we're like, ah, oh, the sound guy fixed whatever that was. No, it was a darn shafar being blown at the back of the sanctuary. I was actually in the bathroom way at the other end of the church when it got blown. I thought we were under attack. Like I was, I was fixing to come out of there and, you know, go to work. Cause I didn't know what was going on. I don't know if you guys were hurt. You're under if you're going to be okay. So it was, it was, it was tough to be that far away and hear the horn. Just in case you're listening and wondering, it is written in the security handbook for the men's retreat. Karate chop anybody with a ram's horn sticking out of their mouth. That's, that's new for 23. Just in case you're listening and not sure about that. Uh, I was going to say I had gone to the bathroom then after the shofar playing. I think it was the same night. And that was when, um, William had committed to being baptized and then there were no shorts or something. So he went running back to his tent and then on the way to the bathroom, he's banging on the door because he got locked out of the, the church. So he was going to get baptized one way or another, but at first it wasn't looking like it was going to happen. So I got him in and then he went running up to get it done. 
Yeah, we go in the back and I said, we got everything you need. And we dip, typically have way too much stuff back there. Somebody pillaged all of our shorts. We had no shorts. So I said, man, we got no shorts. And he said, I'll do it. My boxers. I said, I won't. So we got to figure out what we're going to do here. So he went and got some shorts and we figured out, but he got locked out of the church. And uh, we still have those shorts on hangers just in case that is emergency shorts. Just, just kind of all encompassing here, you know, because a couple of the guys mentioned the, the, the music and stuff. I'll tell you, I've, I've played many a church service. Um, and I've, I've never, never heard anything like that before that, the, the, so many men just in unison, just praising Jesus all at the same time. It it didn't sound like a, a it sounded like an army marching into battle, man. It was just it was like I said, I've never experienced anything like that before. Um, and then year two, it was the same thing, you know. But that I, I would recommend just to any man who has never been in a room like that before with so many like-spirited, like-hearted men, voices raised to the, to the praise of Jesus, you have to, you have to experience it, you know? And that's, I, I've never, like the, the fall retreat is actually my first men's retreat of any kind I've ever been to. I've never been to No Promise Keepers, uh, every church I've ever been a member of. Um, uh, men's retreat would be like five guys playing cards, you know, sort of thing. Um, so I've never experienced anything like that before. And just that alone will keep me coming back all the time because I want to hear that sound over and over and over again. Cause it is man, it's army marching. That's what it is. I, uh, last year talked about praying over chairs. So we had kind of a tribe only worship slash prayer. We had a little charge for the, before everybody showed up and we had just our own little deal and I believe uh, the worship team did some songs. I don't know what you did. I don't recall. I remember being to the side and kind of going through my notes to get ready to talk. And I thought, oh, this didn't work. This this, this isn't working. And um, I don't remember what the transition was, but Anthony, our worship pastor, walks by and says, man, that was awesome. And I thought, oh, that's all, that's all I need to hear. So right, right from that little start, that little pocket of men um, just engaging and worshiping in you know, man, only God can do it. And whether you know someone or not, and we want to encourage you to at least consider it. These guys have mentioned how far they've driven, 12 hours, two hours. We got guys from the UK coming this year, Canada, from the West Coast, uh, Southern Florida, the whole deal. Uh, you guys are on here. What do you tell the guy who might be on the fence? Or maybe he's saying, maybe I'll, I'll talk to my some of my elders or deacons, see if they want to come with me. Get here. That That's plain and simple. Get in your car and get there. Get signed up and get there. You'll The rest would fall into place. Just show up. I mean, my my thing would be why why not? You know, I uh, what? There's a bunch of dudes gathered together, eating some food, having awesome conversation, worshiping Jesus, and and getting taught the Bible. I mean, there's there's no reason not to come. And for the guy who might not be a Christian, might not be a follower of Jesus, you're still gonna have a good time. I can promise you that just because you're surrounded with a bunch of good dudes. And that's the thing that, like I said, I've never been to another men's retreat, so I can't compare it to anything, but there's something very genuine about this one that I don't know if they're all like that or not. I I hope and pray that they are, but hearing from these guys that are like, man, I kind of felt awkward. I didn't know anybody, didn't really know what I was doing there. And within five minutes, you feel like you're supposed to be there. That's what, what I would recommend you get in your car and you get there and you're, you're going to be glad that you did. There's not a single dude that I know that left that retreat, not feeling like just rejuvenated from whatever was going on in their life. I mean, there's something that you leave that retreat with that you carry with you long after that retreat and you come and find out what that is. Guys, I, I want to say one thing. We we throw the word brotherhood around a lot, especially if you attend church regularly. We call each other brother and all that. And and, um, being a part of this men's retreat and and tribe in general, but at the retreat, it really shines through. You get a new um, take on what it means to be brothers in Christ. Um, I I just felt that, you know, and, and still do. And you know, I'll come as long as there is one and I'm able. I, I think we are, as men, very good at making excuses of why we shouldn't be there. 
Um, I think it's important to get there because you will leave changed. Um, I, I there, you know, if you've ever worked in ministry, there's those times where you leave on that spiritual high of, you know, just feeling of what seeing what God's doing and leaving that retreat, you are on fire for the Lord and um, you're ready to get some things done for those around you and be the man that you need to be. Let me say this real quick, uh, Josh. I was thinking that as before you said that, that I hope the guys that do come, if you have a church, maybe you walk back into that church a little bit different. If if we can, it's not we, but if that, if that weekend helps breathe some life into you and, and gives a little charge to your batteries and you, your soul feels a little refreshed, uh, may, maybe you approach your, your, your men's group, or maybe you start a men's study or maybe, you know, something where you get together because because of that 48 hours or whatever it is that you're you're here in Indy, um, I, I hope it's good for the people walking back into their churches. Yeah, I think so often we want somebody else to be the guy that starts something in our churches and leads something. And maybe we need to be that guy. And maybe this is the, the Kickstarter for them. Um, I think one thing that might keep people from going is two. There's two reasons, because I've talked to people and they're like, one, I don't want to drive that far by myself to go and be around a bunch of people I don't know. Well, that's no reason because I drove up there to be around people I don't know. I drove five hours. So that's that's th throw that excuse out the window. The second one is I'm just not a people person. I don't like to I don't like to be around people. I don't know. I was like, well, how are you gonna get to know somebody if you don't ever go around them? You know, I've heard both those excuses and I, I said, just throw them out the window. You're not gonna regret going. Don't let anything stop you from going. Get there and enjoy it. You'll be glad you did. I want, I remember the first year I was exhausted when it was over. And I remember thinking, I don't know if we're going to have another one, but we had one. And uh, Doug came over later on that night and stuff. We hung out in the garage and Tim was there for a while. But the next morning, getting to church and I roll up Sunday morning, because you're welcome to stay for church if you want. Doug is outside in his camper. The weather wasn't hot. I remember that. And he is making uh, scrambled eggs in our parking lot. And I thought I could get used to seeing Doug making scrambled eggs in, on Sunday mornings in our parking lot. Um, you just feel like you you know the, the guys that you get to know, you feel like you know them a long time, whether you came with a carload of guys or whatever. I look at the pictures of last year, and there's a lot of combinations of people that I know that didn't know each other before they got there. And there's no downside of getting around other high-caliber humans who are just regular guys, going to love Jesus, worship Jesus, eat some food, and uh, hopefully walk back home or, or drive back home, whatever, just a little bit better. Once again, men, I want to thank you for listening to the Pursuit of Manliness podcast. If you would, would you go to iTunes and leave a five-star review? I always appreciate men that do that. I know there's a couple steps into doing that and writing a review, but I greatly appreciate it. Not only is it good for me to see that, but it's also good for others who might come across the Pursuit of Manliness to get a better gauge of what this podcast, but even beyond that, what this community is all about. And as always, I appreciate you men who share the show and send it to your friends. This is just another way that we build better men together. Men, thanks for listening, and let's keep pursuing biblical manliness.